What's up guys, I'm Rich from Spray Black Studios and today we're going to take a look at how to paint your minis in the Blanchett Sioux style. So then guys, the big question is, what is the Blanchett Sioux style of painting? If you found your way to this video, I'm assuming that you've probably got a good idea of what it's going to entail. But if you happen to have accidentally clicked on the wrong link or found your way here by some other means, I'll give you a little bit of a rundown. So the style of painting itself is inspired heavily by John Blanche, an artist who has worked extensively with Games Workshop. If you have a flick through any of your Warhammer 40,000 rule books, you're pretty much guaranteed to come across some of his artwork on most pages. His artwork generally will show a very grim dark feel to it and this style of painting manages to achieve that through use of earthy, warm and desaturated tones and use of heavy weathering techniques as well. Generally if you spend any time on Instagram or on various painting blogs you will have come across this style of painting I don't think I can go many days without seeing something pop up on my timeline and there are a few guys who are pretty kind of notable mentions here for actually doing this technique such as the guys on the Iron Sleet blog. This was often seen as a bit of a hipster way of painting but it's actually really good for learning your basic weathering techniques and learning techniques like dry brushing uh, which I tend to use extensively when painting in this style. It's a nice break from the Games Workshop heavy metal style of painting with the kind of highly saturated tones with the very clean edge highlighting. It gives that more of a grim dark feeling that generally people will associate with the Warhammer 40,000 universe. So this style of painting can often be seen as a bit daunting for newer painters. But generally it doesn't really involve a great deal in advanced techniques. For me to get a good basic Blanchitsu style model, don't really need to touch on anything such as wet blending, glazing or feathering. Just a bit of good brush control, good use of washes and some basic dry brushing is all you really need. So I've picked out a model that I'm going to use, it's got a nice mix of metallic material and skin tones and I'm going to be running through the steps which I use to do my basic Blanchitsu. So, Let's get to it. So guys, the model I've chosen for this tutorial is a Corvus Cabal model from the Games Workshop Warcry range. As you can see, built and primed already. So the very first stage we're gonna go through is a aggressive Zenithal Dawnstone dry brush. This will allow us to get our highlights in the right places, particularly when using the washes. It's also gonna pick out all of those raised areas just to help accentuate the textures. This is going to be mainly best for the material parts, which we will be leaving as a black colour. So our next stage, we're going to be hitting it with another Xenophil dry brush. And this is going to be with Celestra Grey this time. So this one needs to be a lot more gentle than the previous. We're looking to get a lot less coverage on this, and this should be just the raised, real raised areas that we're looking at picking out here. So the final part of this stage is a very light dry brush with ultra and grey. This will allow us to pick out the real top end of highlights and give us loads of contrast. At the moment these are all very cold colours that we're putting down but as we start putting the washes in that will allow us to bring some warmth back into the model to get us that lovely uh, earthy tones. So it wouldn't be Blanchitsu without a nice smattering of known oil. On this part we're going to be hitting all of the material areas. So we're going to bring it back to a black colour. But with the zenithal highlights that have been put in, that's going to bring all of that texture out of that material and give us this lovely, lovely look. So now next addition is a lovely bit of Drakenhof Nightshade, a nice blue wash. This is going to be added to the material and to the feathers. This will put a nice bit of blue into the shadows and just change the tonality of the material slightly. I tend to prefer with these, like my Raven Guard, adding a little bit of blue into that black can just give it a nice little bit of extra depth. 
as you can see here we're hitting all of the areas with quite a thick wash at this point just make sure we're not pulling because Drakenhof Nightshade does have a little bit of a tendency of leaving uh, strange marks. So once those washes are dry, we're going to go in and add in all of the metallic areas. So starting off with a bit of lead belcher, we're going to be hitting all of the armour plates, all of the weapons, and generally anything you want that metallic texture to. So as Duncan is always so famous for saying, you want a couple of good thin coats here. Again, don't rush the coverage on this, don't slap down too much paint because then you can get unwanted texture added to it. And now it's time to start off the skin. So this model's got quite a uh, ripped musculature to it. So it's quite a prominent feature of this uh, this mini itself. I'm starting off with Rakar Flesh on here and going straight onto our undercoat. With Rakar Flesh, I generally find you want a good couple of thin coats. The coverage is good, but it's not perfect. So having got the Rakar Flesh down and dried, we're now hitting it with a mix of Rakar Flesh and Pallid Witch Flesh to hit all of those raised areas. So the pecs, the abs, on the torso. Leaving the Rakar Flesh in the recesses will already give us this nice pronounced musculature that he's got. We're being careful with our brush control here not to go over any of the material because it's quite hard to undo afterwards. And just picking out all of those raised areas ready for the next stage. So as you can see it's already looking pretty good but we're going to take those highlights just one stage further we're going to hit it with a bit of pure pallid witch flesh so we're just hitting the very edges of the muscle strands generally on the upper parts which is where the light would naturally be falling down onto him and this is just going to boost that contrast so at the moment as you can tell it's still feeling quite cold a lot of people would be pretty happy to feel this as it is but as we start putting the washes on as we get to the fun parts we'll start putting life back into that skin so now before the fun bit we're going to add in the details so initially I've gone back to the Rakar flesh we're just adding in the little bone claw that you can see that's hanging from his belt and then we're also going to be using a bit of Rhinox hide to start off the leather areas. So the strap across his torso and his belt will cover with the Rhinox hide. Rhinox hide for me is one of my favourite for leather textures because actually it gives a lovely coverage. You generally don't need to go too heavy with it. And it also gives quite a nice tone into the shadows. And then following that, we'll go in and we'll pick out the edges with Dryad Bark, which is actually slightly tonally different. It's generally a bit of a flatter, slightly more bland uh, brown, but generally one that I find tends to work quite well with the Rhinox. Again, this will be hitting up all of those lever areas. So now with the steadiest hand we can manage, we've gone to the Steel Legion Drab to pick out the very highlights on these areas. So the real edges of his strap and of his waistband, the bits that are going to be really catching the light at this point. Generally you only want a very thin coat of this because we don't want it to be too heavy, we don't want it to be too pronounced. But it does add just that little bit more depth by adding these in. So 
the trims on the armour plate in, I'll be going to my favourite gold recipe, and that's a base coat of wart block bronze to start with. Be hitting all of the trim areas, so that's the legs, and we'll be hitting the shoulder pads as well. Generally for this you want to get good coverage, so this will be another two thin coat time. And just prep that ready for the Sycorax bronze, which goes over the top of it. So needing to be careful here because the Sycorax bronze coverage isn't great. So a couple of decent coats. Again, trying to pick out the edges of that armor plate just to uh, show that nice highlight again. So I'd say with the base coats down, this model's looking pretty good already. But it's not really hitting that Blanchitsu style. We need some washes to go on it. But before that, we do something very important. So after the tea and the all important Jaffa cakes, it's now time to hit the model with a few washes. So starting off with Reichland Flesh Shade, this will start putting all of that warmth back into that skin tone. Again, being very careful, we're looking to really get this into the recesses of the muscles, just to really show that definition and to try and keep that lovely contrast that we've built up through all of those highlights earlier. So you can get away with being a bit looser with your brushwork here, but again, we want to try and avoid this really pooling too much. And you'll find that we'll start getting more of that human skin tone film as opposed to the slightly ghostly look that we had previously. Once that Reichland Flesh Shade wash has dried, we're now going to come in with a bit of Agrax Earth Shade. Again, another favourite with the Blanchitsu community. With this, we're going to just dull down some of that orangeness that you get out of the Reichland, and it also is going to dirty up the skin a little bit. Again, fitting with the slightly grimy, grungy, grim dark feel of the style of painting. This is a stage where the actual style of the painting really does start to come together. We're now back to the right and flesh shade for a second, just hitting up the edges of that gold, just to bring a bit more warmth into there. And now we're back to the good old trusty Nuln Oil. So hitting up all of those lead belcher areas, I'm sure you're well aware, Nuln Oil will give it that again, that nice grimy look to it, that slightly stained look, and just adds in a bit more contrast and a bit more depth to it. While the washes are fun, here comes the good bit. So, Typhus Corrosion. I use a bit of kitchen roll here. Just put a decent amount on an old brush. So I'm using a nice beaten up dry brush here. And just be very, very careful, very soft. We're just dabbing this, almost a stippling fashion, onto various areas. And again, as you can see, wiping off if you end up putting too much on there. So I would tend to space this out quite a bit around the model and this is what is going to put in that real kind of dirty feel to it so hitting up areas such as the feet, the lower legs where that mud and that grime will generally splash up or build up this is one of the parts that really does start to bring it all together so sticking with my trusty battered dry brush we're now going to use Rise of Rust to do a very light dry brush just to add a bit of rusty texture to all of those metallic areas. So hitting up the weapons, hitting the real edges of the model. So 
So going back to a not quite so beaten up dry brush, I'm now going to be using a bit of Dawnstone over the material, again just to pick out those highlights. So we've got the grime and the rust on all of the metallic areas, but it wouldn't be right without adding a little bit of verdigris as well. So using the Citadel Nihilac Oxide, we're just using a very small amount in the recesses of the armour plates. This is giving another small tone into it, but without really changing the colour palette. Now I want this guy to seem like he's seen a bit of action. So my favourite way of doing this is a little bit of Citadel's Blood for the Blood God, liberally applied onto the weapons, onto the effective surfaces. Once we've done that with a layer brush, we'll then go back with a larger brush or with a dry brush. And we'll just go over it just to spread it out a little bit. And then again, topping up the areas on the real edges of the weapon. So Blood for the Blood God tends to be quite a bright red to it, but actually once it dries, it starts to look a bit like it's been caked on. And now it's basin time. So to fit in with the other models that I've done from this range, we're going to start off with going back to the Rhinox Hide, covered across the base that I've already loaded with sand and a little bit of cork. And now we're going to build it up, add in a bit of white into the Rhinox hide. We're just going to dry brush over just to pick out all of those stones at the edge of the cork. Again, with this one, we're just adding a little bit more white in just to build up those highlights even further. And then after adding a little bit of Typhus Corrosion, again, just to tie it into the model and just to add that bit of dirt. We're going to give it a nice liberal coating of Agrax Earthshade, just brings it down, flattens it out, and takes a little bit of the red out of that Rhinox hide. And that will match up with the rest of the models that I've done in this range. Now on the last bit, just to really finish off that base, using some super glue, we're going to add in some grass tufts using the scorched earth ones here. And then obviously the all important bit of finishing, painting the rim black. So guys, thank you for checking out this video, hopefully you've taken some value out of this and I really hope that you can go away and try some of these techniques to try out the Blanchitsu style on your own minis. I would genuinely love to see what you come up with. You can tag me on Instagram at Spray Black Studios, on Twitter at Spray Black Rich or direct message me on here. I'd really love to see what you come up with. If there's anything in the future that you want to see me try and attempt or to try and teach, then please just let me know. Again, message, stick a comment in the uh, comment box below and just let me know. Obviously, I'd love it if you liked, stuck a comment on there, preferably a nice one, but you know, any criticism's good, it's all helpful. And obviously, if you subscribe, you'll be kept notified of further videos that I will do. I've got a few ideas in the pipeline, but again, I welcome any ideas going forwards. So thank you again, and I'll see you soon.